CC Life Preschool parents, my name is Cherie Akers. I'm the preschool minister at the Forney campus, and I know lots of you from there, but a silver lining to this quarantine situation that we're in right now is that I'm getting to meet um, some families and preschoolers from some of the other campuses too. The preschool team's really enjoying being able to collaborate on some projects uh, to bring you together so that you can see all of our faces. And so today I get to bring you our Thursday devotional. I'm really excited about that. I do have some notes sitting here beside me. So if I look away for a minute, I just want to stay on subject and be sure that I share all the things with you that um, that we wanted to share today. I'm sitting outside enjoying the sunshine. Um, today is actually Wednesday when I'm recording this before the rain happens again. Uh, so if you hear a dog or a bird um, in the background, that's why. I'm really sitting out here because my awesome family is painting inside everyone's home. And so uh, their gift to me is that they're painting my walls. But it's a little chaotic inside the house. So I thought I'd come out here to talk with you and share today. Um, so I wanted to talk with you a little bit about what we've been learning in preschool. But first, I want to give you a little background on what we do and why we do it. If you've been to Growth Track and you've stopped by the preschool table, then you may have heard this, but otherwise you probably haven't. We have a vision statement in preschool, um, which is kind of the basis um, for what we do with your preschoolers. Um, I want to read that to you now, so I'm going to look over here for just a minute. I want to read it to you exactly the way we wrote it. It says, our vision... Uh, which is our goal to establish and lay the foundation of trust in the lives of preschoolers. We know these young children, whom we are blessed to teach and care for, are in the middle of discovering the world around them. Yet they are unsure about most people, other than their immediate family. Our goal is that they learn that they can trust us as we care for them while Daddy and Mommy are away. As this trust in our dream teamers is formed, while we tell them truths from the Bible about God and Jesus, they will begin to learn that they can also trust God and Jesus and will fall in love with him. This trust will begin the, to form the foundation of love, faith, and the gospel of Jesus Christ to help our preschoolers move towards a personal relationship with him as they grow. When I read our uh, vision statement, the word foundation um, really sticks out to me. Um, sea life has structured our ministry, um, as part of a bigger ministry and that's called next gen. You may have heard someone say that term, uh, around the church recently. Uh, next gen stands for next generation. We are, uh, ministering to the next generation of the church of sea life and of the church uh, in the world. Under this ministry uh, blanket are preschool, kids, men, and youth, um, and of course the parents that are associated with those groups of, of um, students and um, children. You may or may not know that the preschool team works uh, hand in hand with the kids men team and we line our weekly lessons and memory verses up very strategically so that the foundational stories um, that your children get are layered um, several times and um, those principles are layered throughout their journey through um, the next gen ministry and then on to youth and then on to adulthood. Also, if you have a child in more than one of those ministries, for instance, if you have a child in preschool and kids men, you may or may not know, but they are learning basically the same lesson, but on their level every week. And so we want this to become fun conversations between older and younger siblings. It's fun for an older sibling to realize that a younger one has learned what they know and, and vice versa. It uh, makes a preschooler feel like a big shot when they can, uh, can talk with their um, older sibling about that. So preschool is the first step in the next gen journey. And uh, we know that sometimes um, we, as the preschool ministry, are the first exposure that your child has to people outside of your home or maybe your immediate family. We strive very hard to earn the trust of parents and in turn of your little ones when they're with us. Uh, we know sometimes that's a hard journey for you guys. It's hard to leave them the first time, uh, but we really, really work hard to earn their trust. Um, we want it to be a positive experience, never a negative experience for them. So that's our first goal is just to earn their trust. We want them to love us as much as we love them. The next uh, goal is then to um, earn their trust to help us lay their faith foundation uh, through storytelling and crafts and activities um, uh, that we do uh, while they're with us for that hour or so while you're in the worship service. And so today I'm just going to walk you through that a little bit as we lead up to talking about our lesson for this week. So how do we um, 
we work in those beginnings that lead to their uh, lifetime journey of faith um, and move them towards a, a relationship with Jesus. Uh, well, the first thing we do is each month we have something called a heart print. Um, that's something that we want them to learn or take away uh, from our time together for that month. We talk about it every week because we think repetition is very key with the preschoolers. Uh, we tie a song and a memory verse in um, for the month. We repeat that every week for the whole month, so four or five weeks, depending on how many Sundays they are. It ties in with the heart print. And then each week we have a story, a craft, and an activity that reinforces what we've learned for the week. So just to kind of give you an example, in March, our heart print was Jesus wants me to know him. And so every lesson tied into that. Our memory verse had to do with that as well. It is, I am the way, the truth, and the life from John 14, 6. And then our song was Jesus is a good, good friend. And it talks about that Jesus loves me and I love Jesus. And it, uh, just like a friend here on earth, we talk about Jesus being our good, good friend, um, you know, in heaven um, and with, with uh, God, his father. So hopefully over the last couple of weeks, you've had the privilege of, of worshiping with your preschooler. That doesn't happen uh, normally on a Sunday. So that's really fun. Uh, we feel another silver, silver lining uh, in our current situation is that you get to participate a little bit uh, with us. You would always be welcome to come and observe one of our large groups, but we think it's really fun that you can interact with your preschoolers right now. So hopefully you've been able to watch those lessons with them and learned a little bit about what we do every week. We try to do basically the same thing every Every week it's familiar it shows them or it, they know what to expect from us they get very comfortable with the routine they get very excited about it um, you've probably heard them talk about goldfish and things like that we do it every single week also we try to do the same thing on all four of our campuses so that those that might attend uh, more than one campus for whatever purpose um, maybe because they're a member of the worship team or um, a job might uh, provide that they would come to the five o'clock service at the Forney campus sometimes, but uh, attend other campuses in the morning at other times. So we like for things to be familiar to them in all of those settings. So to recap our month, um, I just want to recap it really quickly. So you see how each lesson fit into that overall heart print for the month. Um, each week kind of highlighted a characteristic or an attribute of Jesus with a story from the Bible. So week one, we learned that Jesus is the son of God. That was our, our attribute of Jesus. Jesus asked the disciples, who do you think I am? And we taught the children that Peter answered with this. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Peter's answer was right. Jesus was very pleased and he knew that God had revealed that answer to Peter. So Jesus wants us to know that he is Christ and he is God's only son and that Jesus is the key to heaven. So we talked with the kids about that. We had a craft that was a key uh, that they got to bring home and we let them know that Jesus wants them to know him too. Just like he wanted Peter and the disciples to know him, he wants uh, us to know him as well. Week two, we impressed on them that Jesus loves us every single one of us. We learned about the Samaritan woman at the well. We explained that she was alone because she was kind of an outcast in her town. We learned um, that she met Jesus at the well and she was surprised that he talked to her. He was loving to her. He wanted to know more about her and that he already seemed to know some things about her. He did more than just offer her water that day. He offered her living water, eternal life. She was so excited about this that she went back and told everyone in town about Jesus, how he was loving to her. And despite the things she had done in her life, he was for her. So she chose to follow Jesus and she chose to do what the Bible asks us to do and tell other people about Jesus as well. We taught your preschoolers that Jesus wants us to know him and follow him too. And that brought us to week three, and that was the week where everything changed for us, uh, really kind of in a moment's notice. We sent this lesson out just in hard copy form. Uh, we really only had 
about uh, 48 hours to make everything happen. And so the efforts kind of went to the worship service. And so that week, we just sent it to you in hard copy. If you missed it, um, you can go back to our link. It's www.clifec.com forward slash parents. And every week there's a link there. You can go back to the link for March 15th and you can read this story to your preschooler if you if you missed that or, or weren't aware that that was posted for you. So the story was about Lazarus. That's a familiar story to most of us. Uh, Lazarus died, and uh, when Jesus got word, it took him about four days to get there. Um, and there he found his dear friends, Mary and Martha, who were Lazarus's sisters, very sad because their brother had died, and they were a little frustrated with Jesus because it took him so long to get there. Um, the story teaches us that Jesus, as in his human form, was sad also, and he wept. But he had a plan. Um, his plan was to show this family just how much he loved them and cared for them. And so he called out to Lazarus and Lazarus walked out of the tomb alive. Um, he cared so much for Mary and Martha and Lazarus um, that he wanted to show that to them, uh, you know, in an outward way. Uh, so we taught uh, the, the, the purpose of the lesson was to teach your preschoolers that Jesus cares for us, too, in the very same way. He knows everything about us, um, and he cares for us, and so we can trust him to follow him. Week four brought us to our first week of recorded lessons, and hopefully you were able to see that. But again, if you missed it, those links are online at that same, uh, that same uh, website um, uh, that I mentioned earlier. In this lesson, Miss Rachel taught us that Jesus is forgiving and taught us to be forgiving as well. The story was um, from Jesus himself uh, in response to Peter, who asked him, how many times should we forgive someone who has wronged us? Peter suggested seven times, and Jesus said, no, 70 times seven times. He told the story of a servant who owed a king a lot of money. The, servant, the king was compassionate, and he forgave the debt entirely with, with nothing, nothing more that the servant would owe him. The servant, however, turned and went to another servant that owed him a little bit of money. And when he did not have it to give him, he got very upset with him. And he even ended up choking him and then took him to jail. When the king found out about this, he was very disappointed. And he, in turn, uh, jailed the servant that he had originally forgiven. So that didn't work out too well for him. We learned from this that we all have that yucky stuff inside, sin. Sin that makes us want to turn and not do good for our neighbor, even though we might expect someone like the king to do that for us. Um, we taught uh, the preschoolers that Jesus died for that, that he died so we can all be forgiven for that. All we have to do is ask. He wants us to know him. He wants us to follow him. And he wants that so we can be forgiven um, because he went to the cross for us. He wants us to then turn and forgive others the way he forgives us. And that brought us to week five. In that lesson, we learned that Jesus is our Savior. Great news, right? It's great news for me. I hope it is for you too. And we really want that to be great news for your preschooler as well. Miss Mindy taught us that Jesus told the disciples he was going to prepare a place for them. Much like when we get our house ready for a party or for guests to come over someday, soon, soon. We're believing in that. Um, so he told the disciples that he was going away to do that. And at that time, the disciples didn't quite understand it the way we understand the story today, because we know the end of the story. But he told them that he was going away. But one day he would return for them. They didn't completely understand. And so Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that reinforced um, what they were learning from him and what we've been learning all month long uh, with your preschoolers. God loved us so much that he sent us Jesus. He is our way to eternal life, to heaven, and to sit uh, with God. He's the truth. We can believe everything he teaches us. It's all truth, and it's all good news. And he's the life, our eternal life. Uh, when we ask him in our hearts uh, and ask him uh, to live there, then he forgives our sins, and he paves the way uh, to eternal life for us. So I have a fun and kind of timely activity for you to do at home with your uh, preschooler as a visual for them. So I want you to take them to the sink and get a bottle of soap, maybe dish soap, something that's a little bit sticky, not like a foaming hand soap. So a dish soap or hand soap, um, take them to the sink 
and don't turn the water on. Don't give them any paper towels or anything. Just take that soap and I want you to lather it really good. Get it between their fingers all over their hands and um, where it's a little bit sticky on their hands. Then I want them, you to ask them without turning on the water and without giving them any kind of a towel or anything, if they can think of any way they could get that soap off, any way. And really, I can't think of any ways you could get soap off without water or a, a towel. And even with a towel, it'd still be a little sticky. Um, so then I want you to turn the water on and um, equate that to uh, Jesus being uh, living water. And that water will wash that soap away just like Jesus washes our sins away. And it leaves them clean and germ-free, sin-free, yucky stuff-free. And um, I think this would be a really great visual for you to um, do with your preschooler. Should just take a few minutes and it gets those hands washed like we're trying to do right now. Um, so I think this will give them a really good visual of how Jesus washes away our sins. So before I close, I just want to tell you about one more tool that we provide to you. When we are at the campus on Sunday mornings, hopefully soon, because we sure miss you, each week we prepare something called a take home. Uh, the title of it is, What Did I Learn This Week? And we have it uh, prepared and ready for you to take home with you. Um, sometimes I notice people leave those hanging there. Uh, and so it crossed my mind, maybe you don't know what's that, what that is and how important it really is. So I wanted to share this with you really quick. We want you to have something to talk with your preschooler, at, um, talk with your preschooler about the lesson, maybe at lunch or in the car on the way home. So each week on that little piece of paper, we give you a quick summary of what your preschooler learned. Our memory verse will always be printed on there, a brief synopsis of our lesson that day, and then some ready questions that you can ask them. They're probably questions we have already asked them um, during the lesson and they've answered kind of in a group setting, but you can ask them those questions and um, see what they learned and open up some conversation with them and also with the older kids if they're in the car because they should have learned the same lesson. Um, we do this because we want to walk beside you. We don't want to be the only ones instilling that faith walk in, in your child. We want to be your partner in that. And so we want you to have the same conversations that we're having with them uh, to further that at home through the week. Also, you'll find uh, links to our memory verse motions and our song motions each week. So you can play those at home and uh, continue that fun because those two things are some of their favorite things they do with us every week. They love our songs, our memory verse. Finally, at the bottom, you'll find our contact information uh, for each preschool uh, minister for each campus. Uh, we want to invite you. Sorry, there's a bug. Um, we want to invite you to reach out to us at any time for anything you need. Uh, we are always there for you, ready to answer questions, pray for you, whatever you need. So I really, really have enjoyed our time together today. I hope you have too. I um, hope it gives you a glimpse into what we're doing in preschool. I hope that you know we're being very intentional. We don't want to just be child care for your child. We want to be a place of safety, of trust, of love, of fun, and of faith building. And so we're honored to walk alongside you. We're grateful for your families. And right now, I just want to pray for us um, really quickly before we all um, um, go about our days. Uh, if you'll bow your heads with me. Dear God, I just want to thank you for our Sea Life families. Thank you for their faith. Thank you for their trust in us to care for their little ones. And thank you for the privilege of pointing your word, or I'm sorry, pouring your word into their hearts. God, I ask a special blessing over the homes of each person listening today. Uh, God, we're all turning our eyes to you right now. We're placing our trust in you. Help us to be an example of faith and strength to our children and our families, um, to our neighbors and our friends. Um, God, all eyes are on us right now as Christians and how we're handling uh, the current um, affairs of the world. So help us to point all the glory to you. We know you're working all things for good. And God, in this waiting, we're trusting you. We love you. And I lift all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. So I've enjoyed our time together. Uh, please know that your church staff, your preschool staff, we love you. We're for you. We miss you. And uh, we're here for anything you need. Reach out to us. If there's anything we can do, if your family has a prayer request, um, we will see you on Sunday morning uh, on your TV at nine o'clock with a fun new lesson for your preschoolers. And until then, see you later.